just as you did for apples, make up a cylinder of mostly translucent, coloured with a little orange and yellow. Using a single-sided blade, cut down the very centre at 90 degrees. Then turn the cylinder over. If you find the cut hasn't come through the exact middle, like mine hasn't, you will need to recut it. It is really important that this cut is right down the middle. So I'm trying again. That should be better. If the first cut isn't right, the other cuts won't follow. This is a little white sheet. You need to place one half side downwards on a sheet of white Fimo. Nice thin sheet. Then cut around it. Then you can put the two halves together with a slice of white in between. The next cut will be at right angles to the first, but to be sure it meets in the centre, mark a cross on the other side as well. If at this point you have done it before or you're confident enough to make a 10 segment orange, you would cut on the side of the line instead and then on the other, but for an 8 segment orange, just cut through at 90 degrees to the first cut and repeat the process of cutting a section of white to put into it. There we go. The next cut chops in half again to add a further strip. Then add the two pieces together again. And then, of course, the last cut forms the eight segment orange. Again, the last strip of white. Put them back together again. You'll have something which looks a bit like a wheel shape. At this stage I'm lengthening it a little to put the pith on. Just squeezing it in the middle. You'll need the pith part to be about twice the thickness of white. You may need to check the size and roll it several times to get it right. This has to go right round the cylinder. Nope, still not long enough. I'll try again. That ought to do it. Nope. I'll just give it a little squeeze with my fingers. That'll close together. It has to close together perfectly, neatly, without any overlaps. Any overlaps would show up really badly later. 
I'm lucky that that fit neatly without cutting any off. And of course we need some orange skin. Again, the orange skin needs to be a little finer. If you have a pasta machine, it makes everything so much easier. Roll it until it's nice and thin and smooth and even. It wants to be the same thickness all the way along. And then wrap your orange. Just like the apple, you need to cut it and then find the join and make sure it joins perfectly. and cut the excess away. Now the important technique. This is the most important technique for caning. You need to use your hands to squeeze in the middle, on the edges of the wheel if you like to think of it that way, but really quite firmly. Don't be afraid to get your fingers right in. Some people think that at this stage it must be right to start rolling it, but really you need to get these parts stuck very firmly together. And as you squeeze, you can actually pull a little bit. Make that bulge out. Sometimes it sinks in a little bit, like at this end, but a little bit doesn't matter. But it's fairly normal to have some bulging and some shrink sinking in at the ends. I'm pulling and rolling at the same time. As it starts to lengthen, you work outwards from the middle to the edge, but always squeezing behind the edge and encouraging a slight bulging. Using this technique makes more of your cane usable, but if you don't get it quite right the middle should still be okay. At the end you do roll it to make it nice and round and even. This is my favourite bit, it's the ooh moment when you cut through the centre of your cane to see what you've got. If you've done it properly, you'll have one of these. Cut into sections that are the right size to work with. But don't cut all into pieces. Don't cut little slices from it. Otherwise you'll have nothing. You make the orange directly from the cane, just like you did with the apple. I like to start with a perfectly straight edge and again persuade that edge to come in and join in the middle. It's even more important to take your time about this so that you don't show any of the white in the end. Tweak it and press it, tweak it and press it until you've got all the white covered up. But again, make sure you can still see that hole in the end, that's important. Cut off the same as the apple and then close the fruit up. This sometimes takes practice, but once you get used to it, it comes quite quickly. Don't worry if your first few go wrong. 
We've got a big enough cane to keep making hundreds of these if you like. Now we need surface texture. I use a 36 grit sandpaper, but I know some people use pan scrubbers and even toothbrushes. It's your choice. This seems easy and effective to me though. Then put the tiniest dot of green in the hole on one side. Subtlety is important here. Really, don't put too much in, otherwise it looks silly. Again, peeling the orange takes great care and you mustn't saw it, just roll the orange onto the blade. Please don't let your children do this. I'm just scraping a little bit away. Then you can use the edge of your cocktail stick to deepen that line so it looks as if the orange has been peeled by hand. You don't have to make all of your cane into oranges or lemons. What you can do is cut wedges and slices from the same cane, pre-harden the cane and then cut into pieces. The wedges are cut by cutting a cane in half and then diagonally into that half of the cane, two ways. That cuts you out a wedge. That works with tomatoes and eggs and all sorts of canes.